Um, and this year we're working with the Workforce Development Board uh, with Danica and the assistant um, and their team to work on this manufacturing works to help kind of create a little bit more awareness of manufacturing opportunities in Dane County. Um, so we have four of these meetings throughout the year that we're hoping to expose more opportunities uh, with our students and with our school staff. Um, so we've taken some time out of our consortium meeting uh, to spend an hour or here or about here um, with you to learn a little bit more about um, some manufacturing partners. So Danica is in, going to introduce um, the partners and the uh, plan today. Thank you so much to Josh and team for giving us some time today. We have been working in close partnership with Josh and the Dane County Schools for several years. This is our second major initiative with his team on exposing schools to different career pathways. We did the trade-up campaign several years ago. Hopefully you guys uh, see those banners up in the schools about the different um, trade campaigns. We wanted to replicate that for career pathways in manufacturing as that industry in the, is continuing to grow in Wisconsin and is one of the top industries here in our state. We want to make sure that the folks who are working with students are aware of what the different career pathways are and how to get the students into them. And I want to just highlight that we're, we keep saying career pathways because there are amazing job opportunities with companies in our area that have a lot of room for growth. And that's what we want to focus on with the manufacturing campaign is what are the companies here that are hiring, what are the jobs, and how can the students that you're teaching now grow within these companies, continue their education through certifications, apprenticeship programs, um, tuition reimbursement, et cetera. So throughout these four meetings, you're going to hear from a, a wide variety of companies who manufacture with different mediums, with different processes, um, and we hope you get to know the industry a little bit better. Um, we are hoping to do tours at all of them. It may or may not work out because we want to make sure we're not sending you someplace at 8 o'clock in the morning where you're going to get stuck on the belt line for an hour. So we're trying to be really thoughtful about the locations. So thank you again for your time. Um, we've got print materials that are going to go to all the schools. Um, this is the flyer, so each school is going to get about 20 of these. And then these beautiful banners that we have printed that look just like this. There's two versions, one for the production side of things and then one for the more professional services side so the students can get an idea of what the wide variety of careers are. Um, if the schools want to order more of these, um, Josh and Sherry will know how to get directly to our printer for that. So we'll get those at the end of the meeting today. So we look forward to continuing the work. Um, and then what I'm really excited about is in the spring, we're going to have a lead up to some open houses late afternoon, early evening. And the goal of that is to get students and parents and members of the community through several of our manufacturing partners throughout Dane County. So I know everyone keeps talking about we need to get to the parents, we need to get to the parents. So we're hoping that this campaign will lead us up into the spring where we can open up some of these facilities and do tours and have people learn more about what to do here in Dane County. So with that, I'm going to introduce our speakers today. We've got uh, Dawn, who's our host here at Royal, and she's going to speak about Royal and their career pathways, and Kelly from Bell Labs. Well, it's nice enough to host and we just want to give another example of a company here in town and kind of a little bit about us. So to start, who we are, we're a leader in motor control technology. Kind of a funny thing to say for sure, but the history behind it. So we're reaching our 45th year next year. We're located over currently in Madison by MATC. We're actually transitioning out to a newer facility in the forest. As we kind of walk through, you'll see our expansive growth we have and that's just really what's driving it. Um, essentially what we do, it started Malcolm Stack put rodent cakes in like baking sheets in an oven type thing and then it grew into this massive world leader. So it's a really neat thing that not many people know about. It's all right here in Madison. Um, you can kind of see our old pictures. Actually these two gentlemen still work for us. Uh, it's amazing to see uh, Will and Wes and they still look exactly the same as each other not as the picture. <laughs> Let's just clarify that. Uh, but where we are now, so we're headquartered in Madison, like I said, we're reaching about 450 employees. Every single thing is done on site for us. The only individuals who are not located on site are our sales reps. I didn't click anything. Um, our sales reps who are spread out actually throughout the world. All right. Uh, we have 833 project registrations worldwide. We're located in 59 countries. Don't ask me to name them, I can't. Uh, but it's amazing to think about we have that large of reach so our employees get to physically make something that's going everywhere around the world. Alright? There we go. Uh, and here's just kind of a group picture we took one day. 
you can just see the diversity of it, the age diversity, the background diversity. It's really neat to see a lot of those employees. It's not uncommon for our employees to have been there 5, 10, 15 years. Uh, we're playing a trivia game right now, frankly, so I know this number specifically. The number of employees who have been in our company over 20 years is 30. Not many other companies can say that. The number of employees who have been there over 10 years is over 100 out of 450. Um, so retention's really strong. It's also because we've never had to do massive layoffs, and it's something that we really are happy about in the Madison community that we've always been able to maintain them. Just keep rolling. So in terms of products, we have four main divisions at Bell. What most people are familiar with are going to be our professional services divisions. So that's going to be like the Orkin, the Terminex is out there. We make products for them. is going to be our ag division, so stuff like dairy, poultry, vineyards, stores like Farm and Fleet. 2017, we like saved the hops in Washington, so you're welcome for all the beer. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, it's not what I promote to the high school kids, but it's really exciting to know. Hey, internationally, like I said, registered in 59 different countries, amazing. And then we have a retail division that we actually sold to Scott's Miracle Grow, what most people are familiar with, about five years ago and entered a long-term agreement with them. That's gonna be like if you or I wanted a quick snap trap, rat trap, mouse trap, and I have some for you. We went, <laughs> we'd go to Walmart, right, and buy this little Tomcat brand. Yeah, that's us too. So most people have used us, whether they know it or not. Um, they just have no idea that someone in Madison made it start to finish. All right. So really, the nice thing too about us, a lot of people don't realize, and what we want to educate the community on, is we're everything soup to nuts. We have an R&D department, so. Think of it, it starts with an idea for a new bait or a new trap design or things like that. We have an R&D, so we have chemistry, we have biology, we have all these researchers figuring out what to do. How many people want to be a biology major and think, I'm going to go work for a rodent control company, right? They don't realize it. That works through our technical department, researching everything, our registrations department. They have to work with all our foreign partnerships, right, to get these registrations, EPA equivalencies. We're putting poisons technically in other countries. We have to have an entire team who's willing to work with that. And then it leads into our manufacturing facility where we have an entire engineering department who's making sure our lines are running correctly. They're running efficiently. They're working closely with our maintenance team, our production teams, things like that. And then it flows into our corporate office. Still right here in Madison, we have finance, we have marketing, customer service, 59 countries, and we have customer service all right here in Madison. It's so that everyone thinks everyone's on the same side. So it's something really interesting. The other thing, how could I forget sport? Um, we do a lot of island conservation efforts. I'm going to tell you it's not the majority of our business, but it's something that we're really proud to partake in. Because we are the world leader in rodent control technology, a lot of um, environmental groups come to us when they need help. The Galapagos Islands, it's the easiest one for me to talk about because we all learned about it in school. I'm assuming kids still learn about it in school. It had 95% biodiversity still intact but there was an invasive species and we partnered with environmentalists to help eradicate that invasive species to ensure they were able to keep that intact. So our employees got to be a part of this. Um, sometimes it's hard to talk about you know, what we do because essentially we are, we are killing those invasive species, but the importance of it is just a whole other education process. So, like I was kind of saying, that Bell Advantage being everything soup to nuts, we get to really take control of it and we get to give our employees the opportunity to grow throughout the company in any which way they want, right? So just to kind of give you some perspective on what the growth we've been experiencing, just like manufacturing as a whole in the state, we have over, over 60 promotions in 2018 so far. Um, 450 employees, 60 promotions, that's nuts, let's be honest. Uh, but it just shows that we'd rather promote from within, and it's something that we really do need. We have over, I just ran the numbers the other day, we have 141 different job titles. And that's not because we have an accountant one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, right? It's because we have all these little facets of our company that not a lot of people know about, unless they kind of get in and learn a little bit about it. And then we grew our headcount 58% from 2012 to 2017. So 200-ish, and now we're at 450-ish, and we're not stopping growing. Um, just to show you the stability that these manufacturing companies can offer. So, in terms of manufacturing, it's kind of this web of opportunities, right? You can see all the different areas just in manufacturing alone. None of these jobs are really going to require a college education, right? These jobs and the people can kind of bounce around between all these, whoop, all these circles without that college education. They get in from the ground floor and they really learn. They learn about what they like, what they don't like, and they can work around. And then we have all these other parts. 
Some are going to require some college education, some aren't. Sometimes employees come in and they work their way through college before hopping in. But like I said, with an engineering team, they have a procurement team, a finance team, the HR team, the best team, R&D team, marketing team, customer service, uh, everything and anything you can think of, but most people don't think of it because all they think of is production and factory work. So the other way we like to promote what goes on in manufacturing is that you truly do have something for everyone. It's just how you think about what you want to do. Do you want something more physical? Do, does someone want to work in a more high complexity job? Is that going to stress them out? Do they not want to work in it? Um, detail orientation. I tell everyone, I'm completely honest, I can, that's not me. I'm probably going to avoid jobs in that category. With 141 different job titles, you're not going to be able to learn specifically what every single one does in depth. But you can start thinking about it in those different manners. And that's how I like to talk through it with kids. Or do you want to gain leadership, take on more responsibilities? None of these job titles up here require a college education either. All of them are ones we internally trained on. Uh, and they're all integral parts of our company. So I'm going to give you a couple examples of employees that are still with us today and the past they took. You can see how everyone tailors it to their own desires, their own needs, and what they're trying to do. Uh, so someone started off as a packer. A packer is our entry level production position. Didn't have a college education. She graduated high school. College wasn't even on her mind. She knew it wasn't even an option. She took a couple housekeeping jobs, places, uh, and when I asked her why she got into manufacturing, it was for the pay, she's going to be honest, right? A lot of people realize those entry-level roles in manufacturing are going to pay higher than a lot of those other entry-level roles. And then she was able to work her way up. So blue line operator, Telstar operator, really she got to learn different types of machinery. Um, she saw these jobs come up. She realized, hey, I want to try something new. I like working with my hands. I like doing something. Now she's actually a production shift coordinator, so she has a really big leadership role on our team. All from starting as a packer. Uh, this young woman came in as a packer again, entry level, high school grad, didn't know what she wanted to do with her life, couldn't afford college, wasn't sure if she wanted to do it or not, but she didn't want to go to college and do that herself, right? So then she went to QA, so quality assurance. She really liked the detail orientation of that. She was a QA assistant for a while. Um, and she started going to college. She started going, you know, I, I think I want to work more in accounting. So we had an accounting clerk position open. Again, didn't require an, a college degree. A lot of people might think it would, but it really doesn't. We can train a lot of that. She was an accounting clerk for a while. I'm like, no, thank you. I don't like finance. I can't blame her, let's be honest. Uh, so she became a project coordinator on our marketing team. She partnered closely with Scott's, our retail brand. Uh, she worked as she went to college. Uh, and then she graduated college and is now a project manager on our marketing team all from starting at our company as an entry-level packer going, I have no idea what I want to do. She didn't have to stay in manufacturing. She didn't have to have a college degree to get in the company. Um, but she found a really good job by starting there. Next one. Um, so she's interesting. Anyone want to guess what her career was before manufacturing? She does have a college degree, but she did need it to start. She was a teacher. Um, Sorry, not that I'm trying to like recruit you guys. But if you want to, don't get me wrong, I need employees. We can definitely talk. But the neat thing about her was she just had a lifestyle change and needed to work third shift. And she had no idea what she was doing. She never considered manufacturing. Someone talked to her and said, you know, you don't need any experience in this. And there's so many different advancement opportunities. Come try it. And then she held all these different roles. So she's a packer. She's a triangle operator, again, just a different type of machine, and a mentor. She kind of pulled in that teaching experience. She got to help others. Um, she needed to switch shifts, right? Her lifestyle switched again. She went to second shift. No idea why, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. She couldn't pay me the money. But it worked for her. She needed it. And then she took on a leadership role. She was a production shift coordinator. Uh, really, she missed kind of that training and teaching aspect. OK, great. She got to go to another QA trainer, so quality insurance trainer role. Um, and then she went to production trainer. So just a little different of teaching, just depends on what you're teaching, but she, she really enjoyed it. Uh, and then finally, she saw the materials coordinator position open, and it's just more responsibility, a little more leadership on the team with that, but every time she had a lifestyle change, every time she realized, hey, I wanted to try something and it wasn't really for me, she was able to find a different role in the company because we're so big, because there's so many different opportunities that a lot of people don't know about. You're not getting stuck in a streamline. You don't have to go A, B, C, then D, right? You can kind of hop around and figure out what you want and still get that job stability. Another good example. So he started off as a packer. He uh, graduated high school. Okay. Uh, 
And then this year, Wisconsin actually started their first mechatronics apprenticeship program. So it's kind of like an advanced maintenance apprenticeship program, really dealing with that programming of machinery as we're all getting more automated. And then he got to do the apprenticeship. And so he graduated high school and said, you know what, maybe I want to go to college, maybe I want to go to MATC and do some courses, I don't know. But I'm going to wait. I have a full-time job. So he still works for us, he has a full-time job. He just got a promotion to Packer 2, actually. His full-time job, he's eligible for benefits. It gave him a sense of independence. Um, he's moving out, he told me he's going to make his mom sad, but he was really excited that he could afford to move out of his mom's house, right? He graduated high school, he really wanted to do something, but he still has that stability, that job, getting that education. Um, so, really all you need is basic math, ability to read write. College degree isn't required for a majority of our positions. As you get into our upper level professional positions too, we can sometimes get you there if you start in the company and you start from the ground up. Uh, it's not a 20 year progression either, right? Because we're growing so fast. And that's what we really want to teach students about. So, we still need those soft skills. The same thing you guys are dealing with. We need them to play well with others, right? Teamwork's a huge thing. Um, sometimes they're working by themselves, sometimes they're not. You're going to work with people from a variety of backgrounds because you don't need experience in manufacturing to get in manufacturing. So, you have people from every and any background you can think of. So, at our company, especially, we do offer, like I said, that manufacturing internship. As long as they're a high school senior, they're going to be put on the floor. They're going to get some real life experience. They're going to work with their hands. Um, you have the practice job. That's, I know that's a big thing nowadays, and that's really what we're happy to be able to do. We can do summer employment. Someone graduated from DeForest High School. He comes back every summer, every winter break. We're happy to make room for him. And it's easy. He comes home from college, and he gets to make a good job. And our wages have been going up progressively every year, and so his wages go up every year. Part-time employment, we're even starting to talk about that. If someone, you know, has college classes but can work a couple days a week or can work <laughs> a shift for the full week, we want to be able to work with that. And of course, full-time employment. 